Jennifer Guinness lived a life of quiet luxury. Her family name resonated with wealth and prestige. She resided in a beautiful mansion overlooking the sea in Hove. Her days were filled with the comforts and privileges afforded by her family's fortune. Jennifer enjoyed a life removed from the everyday worries of most. She had a loving family and a secure future. Her world was one of elegant dinners, social gatherings and leisurely pursuits. She was a prominent figure in Dublin society. Despite her wealth, Jennifer maintained a low profile. She valued her privacy and avoided the spotlight. She preferred the company of close friends and family. She was known for her kindness and generosity. This peaceful existence was shattered on the night of April 8, 1986. Her tranquil world was invaded by violence and fear. The heiress became a victim. Her life irrevocably changed. She was kidnapped from her home plunging her family into a nightmare. Darkness cloaked the Howth Peninsula. A chill wind swept in from the Irish Sea. Inside her mansion, Jennifer Guinness was unaware of the danger lurking outside. The night held a sinister secret. Suddenly, intruders stormed her home. They were armed and dangerous. Jennifer was overpowered and dragged away. Her screams were swallowed by the night. The kidnappers acted swiftly and efficiently. They knew the layout of the house. They had planned their operation carefully. Their goal was to seize Jennifer and disappear into the night. The scene at the Guinness mansion was chaotic. The family was in shock. The Gardaí were alerted. A massive manhunt was launched. The nation held its breath. News of the kidnapping spread like wildfire. The nation was gripped by fear and uncertainty. The Gardaí launched one of the largest investigations in Irish history. Every resource was mobilised. The search for Jennifer Guinness dominated the headlines. The media followed every twist and turn of the investigation. The public was desperate for news. The pressure on the Gardaí was immense. Checkpoints were set up across the country. Houses were searched. Suspects were questioned. The investigation was relentless. The Gardaí were determined to find Jennifer and bring her captors to justice. The days turned into nights. The tension mounted. The family clung to hope. The nation prayed for Jennifer's safe return. The stakes were higher than ever. The kidnappers were identified as notorious criminals. John Cunningham, known as the Colonel, led the group. His brother, Michael Cunningham, was also involved. Anthony Kelly, a known Dublin criminal, completed the trio. These men were no strangers to the law. They had a history of violence and criminal activity they were connected to some of the most dangerous figures in the Irish underworld. Their reputations preceded them. The Cunningham brothers were feared and respected in criminal circles. They were known for their ruthlessness and cunning. They were experts at evading the authorities. Their involvement in the kidnapping sent shivers down the spines of many. Anthony Kelly was a dangerous individual. He had a reputation for violence. He was known for his unpredictable behaviour. He was a volatile element in the already tense situation. His presence added another layer of complexity to the case. Section 5. Eight Days of Terror Jennifer's Captivity Jennifer Guinness endured eight days of terror. She was moved from location to location she was held captive in squalid conditions. She lived in constant fear for her life. The kidnappers were ruthless. They subjected Jennifer to psychological torment. They threatened her constantly. They deprived her of food and sleep. They aimed to break her spirit. 
Jennifer's resilience was remarkable. She refused to give in to despair. She maintained her composure. She clung to the hope of being rescued. She was determined to survive. The days bled into one another. Time lost all meaning. Jennifer's only focus was survival. She prayed for strength. She yearned for freedom. She held on to the belief that she would see her family again. Section 6. Rescue at Dawn. Operation Waterloo Road. After eight agonizing days, a breakthrough came. The Gardaí located Jennifer's whereabouts. She was being held in a flat on Waterloo Road in Dublin. A rescue operation was launched. The operation was fraught with danger. The kidnappers were armed and desperate. The Gardaí had to act quickly and decisively. Jennifer's life hung in the balance. The rescue was a success. Jennifer was freed unharmed. The kidnappers were apprehended. The nation rejoiced. The nightmare was finally over. The relief was palpable. Jennifer was reunited with her family. The nation breathed a collective sigh of relief. The Gardaí were hailed as heroes. Justice had prevailed. Section 7. Scars on a Nation. The Aftermath. The kidnapping of Jennifer Guinness left deep scars on Irish society. The case exposed the vulnerabilities of the wealthy and privileged. It highlighted the growing power of organised crime. The incident sparked a national debate about security and law enforcement. The public demanded greater protection. The government pledged to crack down on criminal activity. The case became a turning point in the fight against organised crime. The kidnapping also had a profound impact on Jennifer Guinness. She suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder. She struggled to cope with the emotional aftermath of her ordeal. She withdrew from public life. The case served as a reminder of the fragility of life. It shook the nation to its core. It forced people to confront the reality of crime and violence. It left an indelible mark on Irish history. Section 8. Media Frenzy. A double-edged sword. The media played a significant role in the Jennifer Guinness kidnapping case. The story dominated the headlines for days. The public was captivated by the drama unfolding. The media coverage was both a blessing and a curse. On one hand, the media attention helped to keep the case in the public eye. It put pressure on the authorities to find Jennifer. It raised awareness about the dangers of kidnapping and organised crime. On the other hand, the media frenzy also intruded on the Guinness family's privacy. The constant scrutiny added to their stress and anxiety. The media's thirst for information sometimes overshadowed the human tragedy of the situation. The case highlighted the ethical dilemmas faced by journalists. The need to report the news had to be balanced against the need to respect the privacy of the victims. The Jennifer Guinness kidnapping case became a case study in media ethics. Section 9. Justice Served. Trials and sentencing. The kidnappers were brought to justice. They were tried and convicted of their crimes. They received lengthy prison sentences. The court sent a clear message that such acts of violence would not be tolerated. John Cunningham, the ringleader, received the harshest sentence. He was sentenced to life in prison.